everybody, I've made my way out to Daytona International Speedway today. It is a really remarkable day. Today is the day that they're going to allow fans into the Speedway to check out the bowling, go bowling 250, 188, something, something. Um, the Daytona NASCAR Series Road Course. What's remarkable about today is that this event is taking place during COVID-19, full pandemic in effect. This race initially should have been a road course race up in Watkins Glen, New York, but because of pandemic rules or laws enforcement in New York and people needing to quarantine for two weeks time when you get into the state, the drivers and teams couldn't make it into the state. So NASCAR took a quick audible and uh, welcome to Florida, land of anything goes. This track behind me holds over 100,000 people. During normal races like the Daytona 500 or the summer races, like Diet Coke or Coke Zero 400, etc. Coke Zero 400 I think has even taken place another week uh, at the track. Uh, but normally these tracks sell out or come close to selling out of 100,000 fans. Not today. Today, Limited capacity, uh, what they're saying is roughly just under 10,000 fans, which will leave a lot of room for social distancing. Masks are required at the track as well, so distancing, masks, you need to sign a safety waiver on the way in, and you need a temperature screening before you're allowed into the track as well. So a lot of things that have lit up Facebook and social media and message boards and things around NASCAR itself Fans divided, uh, fans upset about one thing or the other. Um, probably the most vocal fans out of any that I've seen in sports uh, as of late. For a sport that's trying to continue and carry on and at least bring some fans into their arenas, their stadiums. On top of this all, this is Jimmy Johnson's last season in NASCAR. Uh, Jimmy has been my favorite driver for many, many years. Um, wanted to at least see one of his last races um, at the track. So with all that said, let's go try to get in. Check out this plane. Heading into parking. Of note, parking is free today. Free 99! Normally, parking costs more at the track than my ticket costs today. They've just opened the lots. Looks like a little bit of confusion about like where do you gotta go to park. General? All the way! Like a train! Right in there! <laughs> and away we go. They have the craziest snake of a line. Uh, it's almost like a theme park line. With cars though, to try to get into this lot. Because I think they may be doing temperature screenings on the way in, in the car. So at least why I have my mask on before I don't wear a mask while I'm driving down the block. This is what we're looking at right now. I will say the one thing that racing fans are exceedingly good at is showing up early for things. So it's 9.20 right now. The parking lot's supposed to open at 9.30. The doors open. It's staggered doors depending on your section that you're sitting in. So some sections can get in at 11, other sections can get in at 11.30, and then the people that miss their times can get in at 12. But the truck races, they're doing two races today. Trucks start at 12, cars are at 3 o'clock, uh, and uh, people, they get here early because they want a full experience. No temperature screening yet, but they did give us a plastic bag because they did institute clear bag policies at the track now. And they gave us these cards as well. All right, we've parked. Let's head over and see what kind of trailers they have. Some signage outside of the track. So Ford has a booth here. They require masks here as well. I don't know, 
of you, but when I see number six, I still think Mark Martin. This is Ryan Newman's car. And you know, Newman was injured here at the Daytona 500 earlier this year. Really horrific accident. This car is sponsored by Oscar Meyer Bacon. Can't lose with that. I do want to note there's some markers on the floor about where you're supposed to stand and hand sanitizer stations. So, more trailers up ahead. This is really surreal at this point. Usually this entire parking lot is loaded with all kinds of haulers for goodies like freebies, McDonald's, all different cars and race sponsors. Officially licensed merchandise. I wonder if they have a shirt because of the road course. So the NASCAR items here. There's the 235. Here's my guy, Jimmy. Last year, chasing his eighth championship. So much stuff. What do we want? Chase Elliott. There's a good chunk of people outside. I should note there's stickers on the floor for the trailers too, and plexiglass where the workers are. Chevy racing. Further on down the line, see Toyota racing down there. Coming up to Kyle Busch. This trailer actually has like a waiting area. Despite sharing the same name as Kyle Busch, I just do not like him. I've said plenty of choice words in prior races on this channel, but he's a heck of a driver. He's just not for me. Team Penske has their own trailer as well. Now it's interesting, all of these trailers, tons of shirts and hats and all the usual stuff. Even ponchos here, but I don't see any masks that are team sponsored. Here, Kevin Harvick. Guy working the trailer, no mask. There he is. It's for you, Captain Tom. And this wraps our trailers. All right, no Mary here to limit me, so I got. Three more hats. Two Chase Elliott, one Jimmy Johnson. We did not get in today's races, but also, you won't be getting any prizes from us. So go ahead and throw one on for us to keep ourselves safe, our employees, and our drivers. Thank you. This is the party. There's a trophy in that suitcase. That guy just got stuffed for not wearing a mask. Employees, vendors, drivers, and their teams, everyone who enters must pass through the following health screening. If you are feeling sick or experiencing flu-like symptoms, if you've been in contact with someone you've known or suspected had COVID-19 symptoms, or if you are under any self-quarantine orders, you must refrain from entering and seek medical attention as instructed by the CDC. Hello race fans, welcome to Daytona International Speedway. Thank you again for your cooperation in helping our safe, successful return. We understand there may be some amenities and event activities that are not currently taking place during this weekend's events. Some changes in our event schedule are necessary to ensure the safety of our fans, our employees, the drivers, and their teams. All procedures for this weekend's events have been put in place to ensure the health and safety of all attending. Thank you for all your hard work as we continue to navigate these unprecedented times. So far so good. This is the line to get in. People are pretty distanced. There's a guy walking around checking masks and well, normal security procedures. Good. Free hand sanitizer. Off to the escalator. And they're facing people out going up as well. Anything beyond 156 is shut off 
for the general public. There is signage up around COVID-19 and the risk for being here. It should be noted there is no fan zone access, no garage access or pit access for the race today. And there's limited food and beverage opportunities here today too. Four Rivers closed. And my seat all the way down section 171. Let's just take a peek out at it. I'll be in the next section over there. Four rows up right before the first turn onto the road course. You see the trucks out there already. They'll start in about 45 minutes. All right, so there's a lot of bathroom options, but not a lot of food options. They got a cheeseburger and fries. It's 12 bucks. And soda and water. But this area doubles as a mass free zone and a smoking area. Well, this is where my seats are. Looks like National Anthem will be over here. First turn. Lord, I need to be for 13 minutes. We ask you for protection, for guidance. God bless America, my home. But one of the trucks is sponsored by Rona. Rona. What? Moving down a little bit so you can get a little bit of a better view of what it looks like.
That is a huge miss. Look below me. If you've been to this track before all of the reconstruction, remember the good old days of walking down there and trying to seek shelter from rain and having all the rain just drip down? This is the line for beverages, the shortest line for beverages, and of course I did find a water fountain after I threw my water bottles because one of the guest services people told me that there were no water fountains. But honestly, it looked like even though they have water fountains, they may not have been turned on because it looked really dried out. Well, we have about a half an hour before the Cup Series starts. The cars are out on the track down there, but lots of rain clouds in the distance. They will ride in the rain, just not thunder and lightning. This is really exciting because I've been here dozens of times and just watched the cars go around the normal speedway. I've also been here for the Rolex race where they use the road course. I never saw the Cup cars go on the road course. If I like something, I don't mind mixing them together. I cannot wait. Your cars. Drivers to your cars. Starting 19th. For the owner who has won 10 times here at Daytona on the trial, made his point for his debut here at Daytona at number 43 with the game, it's Bubba Wallace. Starting seventh with her three last five points races, including the last two. Driver number nine, Chevrolet from Dawsonville, Georgia. Chase Elliott. Fourth, he raced in the Rolex 24 this year in the GT Daytona. Since we're on the beach, great to see the light that featured in that piece we just saw on our screen. Setting up what is very distant. They add we are coming to you to ask for your presence and your blessings with us. For the
finishes first in the first stage and Jimmy is third. At the start of the second, Jimmy is in second place. Definitely rain coming. Here we go, stage three. Major wipeout with Harvick. And that does it. Thunderstorms with lightning in the area. Everyone has to leave. continue the race and watch it on TV. I guess I left at the right time. The rain is starting to kick up. Alright, so I'm back from the track. The race has actually already restarted, so I'm going to get back in and watch the rest on TV. I did think it was just enough. Uh, and, and quite honestly, it was just enough because of the sun. I think, you know, it probably went through about like eight bottles of water while I was out there. And, um, so you should know if, if you're coming back to the track for the Coke Zero race in a couple of weeks, um, there was very limited food uh, options. So there were like two burger stands and the burger stands also had hot dogs and chicken fingers. And I think there's one other stand that just had um, hot dogs. Um, drink wise, I think they primarily had like Bud Light and Budweiser. Um, and that was in a couple of stands also. Not a lot of options uh, at this point, at least inside. Um, they had a couple places set up outside in like the uh, pavilion area where DJ was uh, working. Was it a perfect experience? Um, I don't think so from, you know, f f for any means, but I think that the Daytona International did what they tried or, or tried to do their best to make it um, an experience where a limited amount of fans could still get in um, to watch uh, the race. And they really, it, I think their spacing was really good. Um, their uh, signage about like mask use and distancing and using hand sanitizer or cleaning, etc. Even the bathrooms, like the urinals were spaced. Um, every other urinal and the sinks the same way. I think they did a good job with that stuff. Um, unfortunately, I think when you get into the track area, there wasn't um, anybody like enforcing um, anything in the seating itself. Like, you know, you kind of self-police where you were sitting, although like nobody was sitting directly in front of me or next to me, there was a lot of spacing. So no concerns there for me. I did see other areas where people were just sitting where they wanted to and kind of sitting right behind other people or in front of people. Um, and that's maybe fine. Your mileage may vary if you're comfortable with that. Um, mask wearing in the stands was kind of 50-50. Uh, um, and I'm not gonna go full Karen on this whole uh, debate about masks and no masks, but you're outside and um, there was a lot of distance in between everybody that was sitting um, anywhere remotely near you. So, um, you know, I, I didn't feel like there was any um, danger at, at whatsoever, you know, with anybody that was sitting around me. So um, it was great being able to get back uh, to the track. I normally sit a little bit higher up. Um, obviously, if you want a better view, you sit higher up so you can see across the track, etc. But um, I also, I think this time was kind of like a throwback to me when I first started going to Daytona International, I sat very close to the track and you can almost like feel the cars as they come by with like the, the wind pulling you. Um, and this was kind of like that, but, um, great experience overall and tickets were cheap. They were cheaper than, um, I normally would spend for like the Coke Zero race and certainly a lot cheaper than the Daytona 500. Um, no fan zone access. Uh, so, you know, no interactivity and like very limited with the trailers, etc. So you come to the race, you're pretty much just coming to the race. Although I did see out in the parking lot, people had set up like tailgates for themselves and everything like with cooking, um, you know, grills and, and everything. So you could still 
do all of that. Parking was free. I mean, if you've ever gone to the race and looked at how much parking was, I mean, I think for the Rolex race, uh, we pretty much paid um, probably 50 bucks or more just to park in the same lot that I parked in today where it was free. So, in any event, good times, um, but back to reality tomorrow. So, um, thanks a lot for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.